Hello, this is Cindy Blair from the Alexandria Museum of Art. Welcome to an Art Together Tuesday bonus edition. Last week, we spoke to artist Claire Gowdy about how, with the encouragement of artist and friend Sharon Ferret Bailey, she embarked on a career in painting. And she also shared her tips for marketing your art. Today, she shares her painting process with us and how therapeutic painting has been for her. Um, to lengthen the story a little bit, before I started painting, I was in between jobs and I had actually met Sharon on my previous job. We both worked for the same person, but it was, um, it was, a, it was a high fast paced job mm -hmm. and I do have some health problems and it just was not going to be a good fit for me long term. So I stopped that job and then it was about a year later that I started painting. But I suffer from uh, a genetic disorder and it causes my body not to be able to detoxify. Mm -hmm. So we all take in toxins from our environment, but my body holds them. So what this does to me, and I've, I've had this my whole life, but what it does to me, it makes me very tired. Uh, I have a lot of brain fog. Um, I have days where I, I really have to rest a lot. So those are the main things, fatigue, and it, and it can make you depressed you know, when you're not able to function at a normal capacity. So when I started painting, it really, I noticed that when I painted, I didn't feel bad. Right. And yeah. I attribute that to you're using a, a different side of your brain. You're using the right side of your brain, which is not the, um, the part that you really have. It's a, the creative part. Right. And so yeah. when I launch into that creative mode, I don't think about how I hurt or how tired I am. So I, I, I realized early on that it was something that was not only going to be good for me, but that it was going to be something that I could have longevity with and yeah. enjoy and make money with all at the same time. I, and I might add that my previous job was a marketing job. Okay. So I do yeah. have some experience in that. Mm -hmm. uh, the art world is, is its own niche and you have to learn how to navigate it. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't suffer from um, being afraid <laughs> to approach people, which is a common thing with artists. So I really try to encourage people. It's so much easier now that we have online because you can just submit things. Yeah. And you don't it's a simple yes or no. It's not somebody going up and down on your painting in front of you. So <laughs> yeah. it's so much easier now. So yeah. I hope that, I hope that answered you. So yes. Yeah, yeah, so. No, I mean, I, I do think that, that it's nice that, you know, that I, I've experienced that too, where art can sort of take you to another place almost in your body. Yes. where um you know you feel so much better so i can really relate to that as well and um i think a lot of people can mm -hmm. yeah, so tell us a little bit um about your technique well what i do first is i decide what colors okay and um i'm getting more and more into painting series which you know painting several paintings of one palette if it starts catching on you know i i'll paint but this one has a lot of colors in it predominantly pink but in all my paintings, every one of them, you will always see a focal point. Um, let's see. In this painting, it's going to be this area here. Can yeah. you see that? Yeah. I always like to make um, one area either larger in shape or heavier in color, just more emphasis in that one area. And I always use the rule of thirds where you divide into a tic-tac-toe kind of and, you know, put either here, 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 or here. So and you're putting your focal points on the intersections of the Intersections of the tic tac okay. toe. That's great. how I call it. That's how I say it. No, but, I think that's great. Yeah, and, and not exactly on that, but in that general area. So yeah. I usually, and, I, and I usually paint in three, so you can see three kind of areas. These are connected, sometimes they're not connected. Um, I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you a big diptych that I just finished. Yeah. So this piece, um, I'm actually, um, my art has been featured on HGTV and uh, on the show called Bargain Mansions. Yeah. You should watch it because the, the, it's on Tuesday nights at 8 central. Okay. Bargain Mansions. And, I, and the reason I'm plugging it is because the host of the show, Tamara Day, loves art. 
She mm -hmm. loves art and uh, Sharon's actually going to have some work. I know. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, these pieces are going to the show because she loves pink. She adores pink. And so when she saw that I was painting me, she took an interest. So I'm sending those actually tomorrow. So that's exciting. So that's my process. I really, really like to have a strong, heavy focal point. Mm -hmm. That's just my way. Okay. There are a million ways, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's no right or wrong. Right. So there's I'm always gonna... there's different places where you can sink your sink your imagination in, you know, um, like as a starting point. So, yeah. so talk to me a little bit if you can about um, where you start with colors and shapes. So, what informs the colors and the types of shapes that you're using? Well, I really, really like a blend of warm and cool. Most of my paint is mixed with something warm, like a raw sienna or an ochre. I just love that feel. Uh, even in my cooler paintings, you'll see warmth. I adore a pop of orange or coral. That will be incorporated in almost every painting. Okay. But lots of raw umber, ochre. I love, um, and I love olive green. So. Those are, those are colors that are, are going to show up, even if just a little dot somewhere in the painting okay. or, mixed into, yeah, or mixed into my paint. That's just how I do. That's how I like. Mm -hmm. I know there's this idea of the mother color that may be a neutral color that you're mixing into all your paints. I do go by that. Mm -hmm. It's something that I came by naturally. I didn't even know that there was such a thing um, because I am self-taught, but yeah, I do a lot of mother color, especially with um, yellow ochre. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can see that. I start. Yeah. And then I put my darker colors, my predominant, whatever I want to show up the most, that goes on first. Okay. And then I layer on top of that. And then I'm probably going to go back and add some more of that towards the end to make sure it pops. But it's constantly a layer, dark over light, light over dark. Um, and this, let me see what piece it is. Because I want to show you what I was playing with this week. Oh, here it is. Tone on tone. Oh, wow. Bring it. Can you see? Yeah. I'm going to turn it. Yeah, turn it a little better. Oh, that's beautiful. See, like I have some lighter aqua on top of the darker aqua, and I have some lighter orange on top of the dark orange. And so I really love that value change yeah. in the, within a color. So that's that. Now, another thing that I'm known for is my gestures. Okay, See, yeah, the, talk a little bit about your gestures. Talk a little yeah, bit about that. I adore gestures. And I, I call them pretend writing. Um, I like to hold my brush really loose and make marks like this, just flimsy and organic. Yeah. Sometimes I use my left hand because I'm right-handed. But I also use a lot of soft water-based crayons called gelatos. Ooh. And I do lots of big swirly marks. Now this one, uh, can you see right here? Yes, I can see that. Like that was done, this was a paintbrush, a long paintbrush with a small brush on the tip. Okay. I just did a big swirly here and then I went over it with a crayon. So I do, I just do a lot of that really organic gesturing that, that is unique to me. Everyone has their own yeah. look of that, but I, and then I love to go in on this one. I did black with a paintbrush here gestures, but then I just covered some of it up with the aqua paint. Okay. Yeah. Just a kind of peekaboo. So, I love to have surprises. I like people to come way up to my painting and see the painting behind the painting. Yeah. I also use a lot of airbrush medium, uh, okay. yeah. which is hard to find. You have to order it usually. And that's the stuff they put in the airbrush machines to thin the paint out. I love putting that in my acrylic paints to make all the thin washes because I like to paint kind of heavy and then I like to go over the heavy with some see-through layers. Okay. Um, I like to have a lot of depth. Yeah. So if you, so if you ask me, I would say, I love gestures. I love depth. I love change in value. Um, yeah. I can, I mean, I can see that. 
Mm -hmm. I can see that for sure. So you, so you're painting in acrylic, is that right? Mainly acrylic. Okay. I don't use any oil paints. Uh, that's another thing with my health condition. I really okay. don't want any toxicity. It's hard to get away from all toxicity, even sure. in acrylic paints. But I always make sure that whatever paints I buy have that AST, is it ASTM rating on it? Yeah. Um, so I'm careful with my paints and I love fixative but I try not to use it. If I do use it, the spray fixative, I go outside. It's highly toxic. Mainly what I use is casein based fixative, um, okay. which is a milk base. You can buy it online. And then I use um, clear gel medium to dab on top of those crayon marks. I'm a varnisher. I like my paintings to be varnished. Not all artists varnish yeah. their paintings, yeah. which is fine. <laughs> but um, that's just me. Yeah, so yeah. I have to glue down all those gestures so they don't bleed into the varnish. Yeah. So that's okay. another part of That's a big part of my process too. I'd like to thank Claire for being so generous with her time. And if you'd like to learn more about her artwork, you can go to claregowdy.com or find her across the social media platforms at Claire Gowdy Art.